What's up guys, Evil D here, and tonight I'm going to try something new. Now, I had this idea that popped into my head about half an hour ago, and I figured, you know what? This is pretty cool. You are an awesome person, Evil Deer, and I was standing there, I was like, fucking know if I am, man. Like, come on, high five. But okay, so this is the idea. So basically, I'm going to grab random household object, and then I'm going to obviously describe it, but I'm going to describe it in English and then I'm going to translate all those words into Esperanto because what I've noticed, and this is not just with other people, this is with myself as well, is that when I'm learning Esperanto, I learn like all the overbearing words, you know, the words for everyday objects and stuff like that, but then when it gets down to actually describing those objects in detail, it gets difficult because I don't actually know all the words for that object, like I'll know like the colours, the basic shape, maybe. Um, things like that, but then when you get into like the nitty gritty of it This is where you need to learn these like little words that you won't normally use in an Esperanto conversation Unless you live with like an Esperanto family, so I figured we'll try it out if you guys like it Let me know in the comments below if you like it I'll do more of these videos if you think it's the most stupidest idea in the world Let me know in the comments below and I won't do more of these videos <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to describe this mug <laughs> in Esperanto. Now, I'm gonna speak in English, but I'm actually gonna translate all the words to Esperanto. So obviously, this is a Sesame Street mug. I don't know where I got this from, probably my wife acquired it, but yeah, we're gonna go with this, okay? So the most basic word for any container in Esperanto is the word for container, it's uio, okay? But no one really calls this a container. They might call it a trinkuio, which is a drinking container, but you generally don't see that unless they're kind of, they don't know what it would be called their own language anyway. They just go, yeah, it looks like some type of drinking thing. So it's a trinkuio. But this, most people will call a tasso, which is the word for cup. However, you will see within the Esperanto, most people when talking about a mug, which is what this is actually is, as tasego, okay? Now, I know egg means, or ego means like uh, big or extreme or to a greater extent, okay? But the word tasego is generally reserved for a mug. So that's the word you generally use for a mug, a tasego, okay? Now, the next thing you're gonna notice about a tasego or a mug, okay, is that it's got a handle. Now, the word I generally use for handle in Esperanto is tenilo, which obviously is a tool for holding, okay, but there is an actual word for handle in Esperanto, and that's anso, anso, okay. Now, I don't generally use that one very often because a lot of people don't know it, but that, that's the actual word for it, okay, if you want to be particular about a handle for a cup or a, like a door or something like that, it's anso. Now, Next thing you're going to want to do is you want to describe the shape of it, okay? So first up, what is, like, what shape is this? It's kind of like a half cylinder, I guess, type of thing. So I would say the word for cylinder is cylindra, cylindra, because it's an adjective, obviously. Um, but it's kind of like a half cylinder, I guess, so it's duon cylindra. It's really up to you guys. Now the next thing is, obviously, every cup is open, okay? It has one open end. So the word for open is not malferma, okay, like you would do for a door. The word here you're looking for is aparta, aparta, okay, and aparta actually means as an open to the world. It's not closable, you can't close it. So for instance, if it, you can close this, say it's got like a cap or something on it, then it would be malferma or firma. But here it's aparta because it's always open, okay? Like for instance, a ute in Esperanto is known as a um, aparta camioneto, Okay, so that's a predator. The next thing you'll notice is that it's got a bottom, okay, or a base. So the word for base in Esperanto is bazo. But you could also say here that um, you'd use fundo, which is another common word that you'd use for the base of like an object like this. So bazo or fundo. Okay, next thing you'll notice is that this one is actually concave. It goes in a little bit. So the word for concave is concava, concava. Now that's all good. So far we've, we've quite Describe quite a few characteristics of this mug. I guess the next thing is it's kind of smooth. So there you'd use glata. That's the word you're looking for there, the adjective. Ah, the next thing. Um, it has like a rim here, like a um, edge to the cup, okay? And the word for that is rando, rando. So I think that's pretty much it. I think we've pretty much described this apart from the fact that it's, you know, it's a Sesame Street cup. Um, so basically just a quick rehash. We've got the Basel. Um, or the fundo, it's a perita, 
um, it's cylindra forma mis posas. Um, I just randomly went to Esperanto then. Um, it's also uh, concava here. Uh, it's glata because it's nice and smooth. It's got a tenilo or an anso here. Um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much all of the words that we covered. Obviously, there's the, the various names for cup. Also, just a random thing. You will see the word for glasso and tasso. Okay, glasso, when you put that into a translator, the first thing you're going to get is glass. And you're like, yeah, that makes sense. So you think a glasso is just a glass cup, okay? But that's, that's not correct. There is a slight difference between tasso and glasso. And it does, it is to do with like the material, but also, for instance, glasso can apply to things that aren't made of glass, okay? That are also cup shaped. Generally, the difference between tasso and glasso is that tasso has a handle, a tenilo or an anso, while a glasso doesn't have a handle. So if you have a cup, okay, and you pick it up and you want to say cup, just check does it have a handle or doesn't it if it doesn't have a handle generally the word is glass but if you really want to be safe you can just say tasso but yeah just for your own information so that's basically it we just described a mug the most exciting object in the world i know i love it so yeah let me know if you guys like this video below if you want me to describe more random objects laying around the house um and that's it if you've liked this video give it a like share it around with your friends subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video and if you're not there i will find you and i will hit you with my mug until you bleed <laughs> And as always, I want to thank my Patreon supporters, who are Sarah SC, Slavish Glayev, Robert Nielsen, Alexander Tolfesson, Colt Arm, Tommy Lindsley, Shane Power, Lupe, JZ Knuckles, Kai, and Zhao Figueria. I hate when I do that. When I speak in Esperanto or English, and I'm speaking about like one or the other, I just start mixing the sentences and it messes with my head. <laughs>